Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be working on lucky numbers in a matrix. And this one you're given an m by n matrix of distinct numbers. Return all lucky numbers in the matrix in any order. A lucky number is an element of the matrix such that it is the minimum element of its row and the maximum of its column. So for this matrix here, 3, 7, 8, 9, 11, 13, 5, 16, 17, it's 15. Because 15 is the maximum of its row, and or the minimum of its row and the maximum of the column, 15, 9, and 3. And this one, second one, it's 12. 12 is the minimum of this and the maximum of 2, 7, 12. And the last one, it's 7. So there's kind of a couple ways you can do this. Let's just draw a matrix. Maybe like a 4x4 four four or something. Um, so let's say we have some matrix that's like this, I guess. Just keep it like simple. So maybe like this. So the way for like the easy problem or the medium problem, you'd want to do this, like the worst thing you could probably do, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it is for every element, you can check, is it the row minimum and is it the column maximum? So like for this element, you're going to skim through the row and check, is it the minimum and is it the maximum? Because that will basically be um, an M squared times M squared solution, right? Because for every element we're doing, or I guess, and that won't be that, it'll be, um, mn and then for every element you're checking the row and the column of that element so it'll be like m plus n something like this so it's gonna be like the worst thing to do because basically for every element you're doing a full row scan and a full column scan so instead what we can do is we can find the minimum of each row and the minimum of each column just by going through this matrix so we can make an array of minimums and maximums for each rows and columns so we're going to like go through this row and we're going to say, okay, so the row minimums, let's say, um, for, so for row zero, the minimum number is one for row one, the minimum number is five for row two, the minimum number is nine for row three, the minimum number is 13. And you can just do this by going through the matrix, right? So you go through row by row, find the minimum. Then you do the same thing for the column. So this exact same thing, you can do this for the column. So we can go down the column. We could say like for column one, or for column zero, the minimum is one. For column one, it's, or I guess actually for the for the columns, we want the maximum, right? So we'll call this maximums. So for column zero, the maximum is 13. For column one, it's 14. For column two, it's 15 and 16. Now that we have this, and you can do this just by doing a one pass through the matrix. Now that you have this, for every element, you can just say like, okay, here's my element. Is it the min of the, the row? And is it the max of the column? So I'll just check like, for this row, is it the min? Yes but it's not the max of the column. And you can do this in O of one now. And basically what you're gonna find is that the answer will be this guy because this guy is the min of the row and it is the max of the column. So that's like the easy to medium solution where you just make an array of Romans and column maxes and then for every element you go see and you can see if it matches that. And then every time it does, you will do that. But the better solution is recognizing, and this is pretty hard to be honest, but you can recognize that there's actually one, only one that's possible here. So let's make a smaller matrix and just show this. So let's say like this number is our answer. This is like our lucky number. So if this is our lucky number, let's call it X. That means all of these numbers have to be bigger than X. So X plus something. So we'll just call this like X plus something, right? All of these have to be smaller than X. And now if you think about it, so none of the numbers in the row and the column of X can be the answer, right? But if you actually look for other column, like maybe maybe another one of these is possible, but for for a number to, to be that, it has to be the biggest number in its column, right? So it has to be bigger than some of these. So it has to be like bigger than X so it has to be bigger than X, but it also has to be the smallest number in its row. And there's already numbers in its row that are smaller than X. So it can't be both bigger and smaller than X. So that's why there can only be one result. So now that you know there's one result, like like what, what are we really looking for? Like which one will it be? It can be zero as well. 
Like, if there's only one, what are we looking for? And it turns out that um, it's basically going to be the number that's going to be the biggest row minimum. Because, like, let's see here. Let's go back and write down this guy. Like, let's just say we have a bunch of row minimums again. Like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it has to be the biggest row minimum because if it's not, if it's not, it's not going to work. So let, let's just try to, let's just try to like have some way where there's, where it's not the biggest row minimum. Like let's say this row is seven, eight, nine, and let's just try to have this, let, let's just try to find a counter example where that's not the case. So if it's not the biggest row minimum, that means it has to be bigger than seven, right? And it also has to be the biggest number in its column and the smallest number in its row. So maybe and it has to be distinct. So maybe let's say this is like this. Maybe we try like a 10 here and we try to have this be our number, right? It can't be in the same column as this. It has to be in like one of these. So if we try a 10 here, for example, that means that these numbers have to be bigger than the 10. And this number can't be bigger than 10 because seven has to be bigger. So because you know that there has to be one, um, you can't have another number that's bigger than this. So basically it's gonna be, the thing we're looking for is the biggest row minimum. But if there are smaller row minimums, then this is possible, right? Like for this example, like this, this is fine, right? Because then seven is the smallest in the row and the biggest in the column. But these numbers can't be can't be bigger than seven if seven is our answer. And set, and like, if it can't be one of these, that's our answer. Because if it's one of these, that's our answer. Um, like, let's say it's whatever. Let's say it's one of like this is our, is our answer or, or this. That means that these two numbers would have to be smaller than it. And if we do that, so let's say maybe this is like five and four. So if we do that, and this is our answer, then um, in order for one of these numbers to be the, the answer, it has to be smaller than, it has to be smaller than the five and the four. So this would have to be, you know, like, which means if these numbers are smaller than the five and the four, they're also smaller than the six. So then the six would be our answer. And then these would have to be smaller. So maybe like something like this or, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't think there's another number left here, but hopefully that makes sense now. So we're basically looking for the, biggest row minimum. This is what we want to find. And that would allow us, because in our in our previous solution, we had to store an array of row and column minimums, which takes up space. So in this case, we don't need any space. So we look for the biggest row minimum. How do we do that? We can do that with constant space, right? So we can go row by row, and we can just keep track of row minimum and the index of that number. So let's say that we'll, we're going to we're going to want to have the biggest number possible here so maybe we'll make this like negative 1 or something cuz i think these all have to be positive and we'll make the index negative 1 so we're going to go row by row and get the smallest number in the row and you can do that in constant space so here the smallest number in the row will be a 1 and we'll check is that bigger than our current row minimum yes it is so then we're going to replace this with a 1 and then we're going to put in the index of where that occurred then here we'll get the row min which is 4 is it bigger than this yes so this is going to be our new better answer so this is what we'll replace it with at index one. And then finally here, we'll get the biggest row min, which is seven, which is better than this. So we'll replace again at index two. So now we know that our row minimum is number seven and it occurs at index two. Then all we have to do is find it again. And we can just go through its column because this is the only number that has the chance to be the lucky number. It has to be the biggest row minimum. So now we can just go through its column and see, are there any numbers bigger than it? And if there are, then it can't be the row minimum or it can't be the answer and neither can anything else. And if there are no numbers bigger than it, then that's your answer. So that's basically what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through our rows. We're gonna get the biggest row minimum. We're gonna find that column that number exists in. We're gonna check every number in that column, make sure it's the biggest number in that column. If it is, we'll return that number. Otherwise it's the empty array and there can only be one. So that is definitely a tricky solution, nowhere near and easy, but yeah, the easy would be the store rows, row minimums and column minimums, or just brute force for every number, check the row and the column, that will also pass because the constraints are small for easy problems. 
Okay. So we'll have the rows, columns, Um, we'll have the initial Roman val. We're gonna try to maximize it, so we'll just make it like negative one or something. Um, and then we'll make the row min index. I, mean, I guess we can use like i or something. Make that negative one. Now we're gonna go through our matrix. So we'll say our row min will be negative one, and we'll go through the columns. So we're gonna get the minimum for that row. So we'll say if matrix uh, row column, actually we're, we need to minimize this. So because we need to minimize it, we can make it um, the other thing instead. We can make it this. And then here we can do Okay, so now for the row, we're gonna have the minimum for the row, and now we just need to check, is it bigger than our global minimum? So if row min is bigger than row min val, then our index will be the row that we're on, and row min val will be a row min. Okay, now that we did that, now we're gonna iterate through um, we're gonna iterate through the row where the Roman val occurs and we're gonna find it, its index. So we'll say four, zero, or, yeah. So column equals zero, call system columns. So we're gonna say, if this is our number, I and column equals the this global Roman value, that means this is the column we need to check. So we need to check this entire column. If we find a value small, if we find a value bigger than this, then our answer is the empty array. Otherwise we can just return right away, which it's only gonna be that one number. So if, or we have to loop through every row. So row equals zero. So if matrix row column is bigger, and these are all unique, so you don't have to worry about the same is bigger than Roman val. That means that this can't be our um, lucky number and neither can anything else. So we can just return here new array list, just an empty array list. Um, otherwise, if we were able to go through this whole row and we didn't find anything, then we can just return um, a array list with a value that is um, the Roman bell. We can alternatively, you can you can rename this to like lucky if you want, I guess, makes more sense. So actually, yeah, okay. So we can just say like Roman bell, rename to lucky number. Okay, so that result, add lucky number and return it. And if you never found anything here, um, well, technically you're always gonna find something here. Yeah, you're always gonna find something here, um, but you do want a default result because I think it, uh, the thing will just error out because it's not gonna realize that it, it'll never, like, it'll never get to this part. So we can just return something as a default. I think you can even return like null or something. Oh, oh. But basically, it'll never it'll never hit this case. Okay, there we go. So the time here. So yeah, so we're going through our entire matrix, and then we're going through one column on one row. So this is like n by n, and then m plus n. So all together, it's n by n. Space is constant because we just have, this is a number, this is a number, this is a number, this is a number, this is a number. We're not using any arrays or anything. So yeah, so let's see what it says. N by M and one, yep.
Okay, so kind of a tricky one, um, especially for an easy. I do think the other solution is the one that you should come up with, and the brute force would be the worst. So probably if this was an actual interview question, it would be like, if you can come up with um, doing the, the row max and the column max and do that way, that would be like a pass. If you do the brute force, that would be a fail. And then if you come up with this tricky one, that would be like some bonus points or whatever. Um, yeah, and that's going to be all for this one. So uh, if you did like this one, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.